one of the most important things in our religion is choosing the right friends, choosing the right people to spend your time with. Because if you choose the wrong person to be with, if you choose the wrong friend to have a friendship with, it's going to cause you problems. Many of our young people, the reason why they're in problems within their houses, within their schools, and why many of the young people end up in prison, is because the people they hang out with are the wrong people. They've chosen the wrong friends to have a friendship with. And nowadays you have people on the internet. No longer now you have to worry about the, the friends at school. You even now have to look at the friends on Facebook or on their Twitter accounts. Who are they hanging out with? Who are the friends of our young boys and young girls? Are they the people like our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Are they great people? Are they like Abu Bakr, or Umar, or Uthman, or Ibn Ali? Are they like these people? Or are they like other people? And from the greatest of the ulama, Hujjat al-Islam, the proof of Islam, Al-Imam al-Ghazali, he has written five key points. If you want to have a friend, if you want to go into business with somebody, or even if you want to get in, uh, into a marriage with somebody, then five things, if you don't have a friend, take someone as a friend, five things you look at. And some of our young people who are off half term now should listen carefully. What are these five things that you're going to look for in your friends? And say, do my friends have these five things or not? Do I have the five things or not? So Imam Ghazali said, the first thing you have to look for in a friend is somebody who has intellect. Somebody who has an intellect. Not somebody who's foolish. The worst type of friend is a foolish friend. Who tries to help you, but because he's foolish, he's going to harm you. He wants to try and help you, but he's going to end up harming you because he's foolish. Finding someone has an intellect. And the ulama have said in a poem, do not be a friend of a foolish person. Why? Beware you and him. How many of a foolish person has ruined a good, gentle, intelligent person. Everything is measured by the people they are with. And the hearts of people reflect the hearts of those who are with them. So if your young people are hanging out with people who are foolish, they're going to, they're going to dress foolishly. They're going to talk foolishly. They're going to wear the fashion of foolish people. When we were young, certain colors and fashions we wouldn't wear. Now everybody is wearing these fashions. Certain type of clothing only certain type of people wore, and now everybody is wearing them. Who are the people telling what young people should wear the fashion these days? And the haircuts. Foolish. And many young people, when they look back at the pictures of when they were young, they laugh. Oh, how embarrassing it used to be. The haircuts I used to have, the clothes I used to wear, the things I used to do, how embarrassing. Why? Because they were foolish or they hung out with foolish people. That's the first. Find somebody, a friend who has intellect, not foolish. The second thing that Imam al-Ghazali mentions, find somebody who has good manners. This is one of the most important things. Someone has good manners. And the ulama say, what is good manners? A person who can control his anger. Control his anger. <laughs> Someone who can control his anger and desires. Inshallah. That's someone who has peace and khudab. Good manners controls his anger. Doesn't get angry quickly. Doesn't get you know, his emotions or his desires run wild. Pick somebody who has these things and control his anger. Doesn't get angry when people say things at him. Or he thinks people are saying things. How many young people fighting in school? Young people fighting in school. Ending up in what they call now unit. A whole day unit. Because they're fighting with the wrong people. Why? Because they're hanging out with the wrong people with bad manners. 
And one of the previous people gave some nasiha to his son. He said, oh my son, if you want to have a friend, take someone who will serve you. He's going to help you. Take someone who's going to protect you and look after you. Take someone, if you're going to spend time with him, he's going to beautify your company, make you feel happy. Take somebody, if you're in need of money, he's going to help you when you're in need of money. <clears throat> Take somebody as a friend when you want to do something good, he's going to come and help you do it. <clears throat> Take somebody as a friend, if you do something good for him, he appreciates it and remembers what you did for him. Take as a friend someone, if he sees you doing something bad, he's going to say, hey, wait, this is bad. These are the people you need to take as friends. Take a friend when you say something, he's going to believe you. Take a friend when you, become, when you are a leader, he's going to accept your leadership. And should you argue with him, he puts you first. He puts your opinion first. And these things can come to the workplace, not just in the school, <coughs> even within the workplace, even with your wife. And Sayyidina Ali, in another poem, he said, a true brother is the one who's always with you, who will harm himself to benefit you. This is a true friend. He's going to put himself in difficulty to help you. And when the troubles affect him and affect you, and he sees you, you're broken, he's going to smash himself and break himself to bring you together. This is the true friend that we are young people to look for. The third thing is silah. Silah. Yani, being righteous. Being righteous. Not being so unfastened. Many of our young people, they end up following gangsters. Especially people who live in poor areas. Many young people want to copy the gangsters. And some of the people don't know what gangsters are. But the young people don't want to start walking like a particular gangster or rap artist or whatever else they want to call them. They have the haircuts and their clothes and these type of things. These people are fusak. These people are people who are in Islam they're called corrupt. Why? Because in their music, it's all about drugs, women, gambling, shooting. This is not... Did the Prophet tell you to do these things? Did the Prophet tell you to listen to these things? And that's why this gangster rap music is haram, forbidden in Islam, because they talk about haram things. They encourage young people to go out and shoot. They encourage people to go out and do drugs. They glorify the drugs. And many young people sitting here, maybe listen to this rap or whatever, hip hop or whatever else they want to call it. It's all haram. All haram. And you can see them now and how they dress. And young people, be careful. Be careful. How many young people are in prison? No. In some prisons they have a Jummah khutbah. 80 people in the Jummah khutbah. Shabab. Ah, young people in prisons. Muslim. Some of them huffah the Qur'an. Why? Because they hang out with the wrong people, listen to the wrong music, dealing with the drugs, trying to be an important person. You want to be important, follow the, follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can look Allah. Allah will honor you. And the last thing, we need to look for is staying away from people or friends. All they talk about is dunya. Their latest mobile, their latest car, their latest fashion, their late, they're all dunya, 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 the world, the world. All they call it money, 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 money. And then even the best that people, when they hang out with these people, all they, then they start to think about, they have a spice. I need to have a house, I need to have a car. Why? Because Fulan has a house. For land has a car. And the women also, this is a problem for the women. They end up spending time with other women, and other women tell them, My husband buys me this, my husband buys this, I have this, I have this. And Miskina, the woman feels sad, and she goes back and she causes headache for her husband, and the husband, Miskin, has no money. And he causes problems in the house. He can't afford to give her what the other person gives. But your, your wife should be careful from hanging out with the wrong women. Oh, all they want to talk about is the dunya. Is that all you have? Gold, jewelry, is that all you have? Is that all you're worth? Gold. When you die, the gold and jewelry are going to go to your daughter. What are you going to have? Your amal. They didn't spend much time talking about. That's all you're going to have. So be careful of that 
your women and your families don't talk or don't mix in with people who dunya, wealth, gold, jewelry, cars, houses, that's all they think about. Leave these people alone. And the last thing, inshallah ta'ala, truthfulness. Have a friend who has siddhaq, who's truthful, doesn't lie, doesn't say anything bad. When he tells you something, he's trustworthy. And the best example is Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, the friend of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best of the Sahaba, al jamaah of the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the friend of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Choose a friend like him if you can find. And if you can't find anybody, be by, be by yourself. No, no point in putting yourself in harm, inshallah. And finally, inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow night is Halloween. I mean, please, the parents, make sure you know your children, where are they going? Some young people now, because they're hanging out with the wrong children, now they're throwing eggs and throwing flour and doing all these things. Haram, ibn al-halal. Haram to throw eggs. Your parents, the country your parents came from, those eggs and flour, they need those eggs and flour and these things to eat. When you're coming here to England and throw the eggs and throw the flour and these haram things, be careful. Your parent, parents should know where their children are going to be. Don't cause any problems in this area. Alhamdulillah, most young people, mashallah, on this night, on Halloween, on bonfire night, which is another problem, in this area they're pretty good. It's the people from all the other areas, they come here and cause problems from Grangetown and Riverside. And they come and cause problems in this area. And the police then, sometimes they can't tell the difference between Butan people and the Grange and the Riverside. But be careful the young people, inshallah ta'ala. Make the most, inshallah, of the little life that you have. This half term, ha enjoy, have fun. And the uh, Lord Mayor, the Mayor will be coming and giving a short uh, uh, talk after the Jummah, inshallah. And I'm going to finish now. But please, after the Jummah, after we finish Salat, remain behind for five minutes because the Mayor wants to speak to you, he's come all the way and his break to speak to you about something quite important. So try to rush out and I've stopped the khutbah early so I can give him more time. Don't rush out, have some manners inshallah and benefit from what he has to say.